Okay, now that we've reviewed, let's get our BFG. Page 115 is my copy. I think that your copies are the same, but if they're not, go ahead and find the chapter that is titled The Great Plan. Um, make sure to use your leader finger. Follow along with me. We've absolutely got to stop them, Sophie cried. Put me in your pocket quick and we'll chase after them and warn everyone in England they're coming. Redunculous and impossible, the BFG said. They is going two times as fast as me and they is finishing their guzzle before we is halfway. We can't just sit here and do nothing, Sophie cried. How many girls and boys are they going to eat tonight? Many, the BFG said. The flesh lump eating giant alone has a most squackling wopsy appetite. Will he snatch them out of their beds while they're sleeping? Like peas out of a puddle, the BFG said. I can't bear to think of it, Sophie cried. Then don't, the BFG said. For years and years, I is sitting here on this very rock every night after night. When they is galloping away, and I is feeling so sad for all the human beings, they is go going to gobble up, but I has had to get used to it. There is nothing I can do. If I wasn't a titchy little runty giant, only twenty-four feet high, then I wouldn't be. I would be stopping them, but that is absolutely out of the window. Do you always know where they're going? Sophie asked. Always, the BFG said. Every night they is yelling at me as they go bootling past. The other day they was yelling, We is off to Mrs. Sippy and Miss Surrey to guzzle them both. Disgusting, Sophie said. I hate them. She and the big friendly giant sat quietly side by side on the blue rock in, in the gathering dust. Sophie had never felt so helpless in her life. After a while, she stood up and cried out, I can't stand it. Just think of those poor girls and boys who are going to be eaten alive in a few hours' time. We can't just sit here and do nothing. We've got to go after those brutes. No, the BFG said. We must, Sophie cried. Why won't you go? The BFG sighed and shook his head firmly. I has told you five and four six times, he said, and the third will be the last. I is never showing myself to human beings. Why ever not? If I do, they will be putting me in the zoo with all the jiggy raps and caddy pillars. Nonsense, Sophie said. And they will be sending you straight back to the orphanage, the BFG went on. Grown-up human beings is not famous for their kindness. They is all squiffle robbers and grink sludgers. That simply isn't true, Sophie cried angrily. Some of them are very kind indeed. Who? The BFG said. Name one. The Queen of England, Sophie said. You can't call her a squiffle robber or a grink sludger. Well... The BFG said, you can't call her a squeak peep, squeak, squeak pip, or a not much me either, Sophie said, getting angrier and angrier. The flesh lump eater is longing dearly to guzzle her up, the BFG said, smiling a little now. Who, the queen? Sophie cried aghast. Yes, the BFG answered. Flesh Dump Eater says he is never eating a queen, and he thinks perhaps she has an especially scrum flavor. How dare he? Sophie cried. The Flesh Dump Eater says there is too many soldiers around her palace, and he durstn't try it. Okay, pause for just a second. Um, so this takes place in England, which has a different system than we do in the USA. And for a long time, they were ruled by a queen and a king. Um, sometimes it was just a queen, sometimes it was just a king. But um, right now, they have a queen. But they also have other forms of government that really do a lot of the governing. And the queen 
now is um, just someone who gives the people a lot of motivation and the people that I really adore. When this was written, they still really appreciated the, the queen. And so Sophie is saying that this queen is really kind-hearted and will do something about it. And the queen has a lot of power. So if you're going to tell anyone that there's a whole bunch of giants, you probably should tell someone that has a lot of power and authority, right? Okay, go ahead and turn the page with me. He'd better not, Sophie said. He is also saying he would very much like to guzzle one of the soldiers in his pretty red suit, but he is worried about those big black furry hats they is wearing. He thinks they might be sticking in his throat. I hope he chokes, Sophie said. Flesh Lump Eater is a very careful giant, Sophia she said. Sophie was silent for a few moments. Then, suddenly, in a voice filled with excitement, she cried out, I've got it. By golly, I think I've got it. Got what? asked the BFG. The answer, cried Sophie. We'll go to the queen. What a terrific idea. If I went and told the queen about these disgusting man-eating giants, I'm sure she'd do something about it. The BFG looked down at her sadly and shook his head. She is never believing you, he said. Never in a month of Mondays. I think she would. Never, the BFG said. It is sounding like a wonky tall story. The queen will be laughing and saying, what awful rub squatch. She would not. Of course she would, the BFG said. I has told you before that human beings is simply not believing in giants. Then it's up to us to find out a way of making her believe in them, she said. And how are you getting in to see the queen anyway, the BFG asked. Now hold on a sec. Sophie said. Just you hold on a sec, because I've got another idea. Your ideas is full of crog swaddle, the BFG said. Not this one, Sophie said. You say that if we tell the queen, she would never believe us. I is certain she wouldn't, the BFG said. But we aren't going to tell her, Sophie said excitedly. We don't have to tell her. We'll make her dream it. That is an even more froth-buggling suggestion, the BFG said. Dreams is lots of fun, but nobody is believing in dreams either. You is only believing in a dream while you is actually dreaming it. But as soon as you is waking up, you is saying, Oh, thank goodness. It was only a dream. Don't you worry about that part of it, Sophie said. I can fix that. Never can you fix it. The BFG said, I can, I swear I can. But first of all, let me ask you a very important question. Here it is. Can you make a person dream absolutely anything in the world? Anything you like, the BFG said proudly. And if I said I wanted to dream that I was flying in a bathtub with silver wings, could you make me dream it? I could, the BFG said. But how, Sophie said, you obviously don't have exactly that dream in your collection. I do not, the BFG said, but I could soon be mixing it up. How could you mix it up? It's a like, it is a little bit like mixing a cake, the BFG said. If you was putting the right amounts of all the different things in it, you was making the cake come out as you want it, as you want, sugary, spongy, curranty, Christmassy, or grub -suchy. It's the same with dreams. Go on, Sophie said. I has billions of dreams on my shelves, right or left? Right, Sophie said. Pardon me. I has dreams about bathtubs, lots of them. I has dreams about civil rings. I has dreams about flying. So all I has to do is mix those dreams together in the proper way and I is very quickly making a dream where you is flying in a bathtub with silver wings. I see what you mean, Sophie said, but I didn't know you could mix one dream with another. 
Dreams like being mixed, the BFG answered. They is getting very lonesome all by themselves in those glassy bottles. Right, Sophie said. Now then, do you have dreams about the Queen of England? Lots of them, the BFG said. And about giants? Of course, the BFG said. And about giants eating people? Swiggles of them, the BFG said. And about little girls like me? Those is commonest of all, the BFG said. I has bottles and bottles of dreams about little girls. And you mix them up, all up just as I want you to, Sophie asked, getting more and more excited. Of course, the BFG said. But how is this helping us? I think you is barking up the wrong dog. Now hold on, Sophie said. Listen carefully. I want you to mix a dream which you will blow into the Queen of England's bedroom when she is asleep. And this is how it will go. Now hang on a minute, the BFG said. How is I possibly going to get near enough to the Queen of England's bedroom to blow in my dream? You is take, talking dumb silly. I'll tell you that later, Sophie said. For the moment, please listen carefully. Here is the dream I want you to mix. Are you paying attention? Very close, the BFG said. I want the queen to dream that nine disgusting giants, each of them about 50 feet tall, are galloping to England in the night. She must dream their names as well. What are their names again? Flesh lump eater, the BFG said. Man hugger, bone cruncher, child chewer, meat ripper, gizzard gulper, mate masher, blood bottler, and the butcher boy. Let her dream all those names, Sophie said, and let her dream that they will be creeping into England in the depths of their witching hour and snatching little boys and girls from their bed. Let her dream that they will be reaching into the bedroom windows and pulling the little boys and girls out of their beds, and then, Sophie paused, do they eat them on the spot or do they carry them away first? They usually just popping them straight into their mouths like a popcorn, the BFG said. Put that in the dream. Sophie said, and then, then the dream must say that when their tummies are full, they will go galloping back to giant country where no one can find them. Is that all? The BFG said. Certainly not, Sophie said. You must then explain to the queen in her dream that there is a big, friendly giant who can tell her where all those beasts are living so that she can send her soldiers and her armies to capture them once and for all. And now, let her dream one last very important thing. Let her dream there is a little girl called Sophie sitting on her windowsill who would tell her where the big friendly giant is hiding. Where is he hiding? asked the BFG. We'll come to that later, Sophie said. So the queen dreams her dream, right? Right, the BFG said. Then she wakes up. The very first thing she thinks is, oh, what a horrid dream. I'm so glad it was only a dream. But then she looks up from her pillow, and what does she see? What does she see? The BFG asked. She sees a little girl called Sophie sitting on her windowsill right there in real life before her very eyes. How is you going to be sitting on the windowsill, may I beg? The BFG said. You are going to put me there, Sophie said. And there's the lovely part about it. If someone dreams there's a little girl sitting on her windowsill, then she wakes up and sees the little girl is really sitting there. That is a dream come true, is it not? I is beginning to see where you is driving to, the BFG said. If the queen is knowing that part of her dream is true, then perhaps she is believing the rest of it is true as well. That's about it, Sophie said, but I shall have to convince her of that myself. You said you is wanting the dream to say there is a big friendly giant who is also going to talk to the queen. Absolutely, Sophie said. You must. You are the only one who can tell her where to find the other giants. How is I meeting the queen? Sounds like the BFG's nervous. As the BFG, I is not wanting to be shooted at by her soldiers. 
The soldiers are only in the front of the palace, Sophie said. At the back there is a huge garden, and there are no soldiers in there at all. There is a very high wall with spikes on it around the garden that stop people from climbing it, but you could simply walk over that. How is you knowing all this about the Queen's Palace? The BFG asked. Last year I was in a different orphanage, Sophie said. It was in London, and we used to go for walks all around there. Is you helping me to find this palace? The BFG asked. I has never dared to go hide and sneaking around London in my life. I'll show you the way, Sophie said confidently. I is frightened of London, the BFG said. So the BFG is nervous, and I don't blame him. He's going to be around all those people and maybe have to talk to the queen. I would be nervous if I was a giant, too. I'd be afraid somebody would hurt me, you know? Don't be, Sophie said. It's full of tiny, dark streets, and there are very few people about it in the witching hour. The BFG picked Sophie up between one finger and a thumb and placed her gently in the palm of the other hand. Is the Queen Palace very big? he asked. Huge, Sophie said. Then how is we finding the right bedroom? That's up to you, Sophie said. You're supposed to be an expert at that sort of thing. And you is absolutely sure the Queen will not put me in a zoo with all the catty piddlers. Of course she won't, Sophie said. You'll be a hero, and you'll never have to eat snozcumbers again. Sophie saw the BFG's eyes widen. He licked his lips. You mean it, he said. You really mean it? No more disgusted snozcumbers? You could get, couldn't get one if you wanted to, Sophie said. Humans don't grow them. That did it. The BFG got to his feet. When is you wanting to, me to mix this special dream, he asked. Now, Sophie said at once, then when is we going to see the queen? He asked. Tonight, Sophie said. As soon as you've mixed the dream. Tonight, the BFG cried. Why such a flush bunking flurry? If we can't save tonight's children, we can anyway save tomorrow's. Sophie said. What is more, I am getting famished. I haven't had a thing to eat for 24 hours. Then we had better get cracking, the BFG said, moving back toward the cave. Sophie kissed him on the tip of his thumb. I knew you'd do it, he said. She said, come on, let's hurry. Wow, this sounds like an awesome plan. Okay, we're going to read one more chapter. It's called Mixing the Dream. Okay, man, I don't remember exactly how this chapter goes. I'm excited to see how he mixes it. Um, yeah, we have time for one more chapter. Whew. Mixing the Dream. It was dark now. The night had already begun. The BFG, with Sophie sitting on his hand, hurried into the cave and put on those brilliant, blinding lights that seemed to come from nowhere. He placed Sophie on the table. Stay there, please, he said, and no chittering. I is needing to listen only to silence when I is mixing up such a naughty, flexicated dream like this. He hurried away from her. He got out an enormous empty glass jar that was the size of a washing machine. He clutched it to his chest and hurried towards the shelves on which stood the thousands and thousands of smaller jars containing the captured dreams. Dreams about giants, he muttered to himself as he searched the labels. The giants is guzzling human beings. Oh, not that one, not that one. Here's one. And here's another. He grabbed the jars and un screwed the tops. He tipped the dreams into the enormous jar he was clutching, and as each one went in, Sophie caught a glimpse of a small, sea-green blob tumbling from one jar into the other. The BFG hurried towards another shelf. Now, he muttered, I is wanting dreams about giggle houses for girls, and about box, boggle boxes for boys. He is becoming very intense now. Sophie could almost see the excitement bubbling inside him as he scurried back and forth among his beloved jars. There must have been 50,000 dreams altogether up there on the shelves, but he seemed to know almost exactly where every one of them was. Dreams about a little girl, he muttered, 
and dreams about me, about the BFG. Come on, come on, hurry, get down with it. And where is the wonky world is I keeping those? And so it went on. In about half an hour, the BFG had found all the dreams he wanted and had tipped them into one huge jar. He put the jar on the table. Sophie sat at the bottom of it. She could clearly see the 50 of those oval, sea green, jellyish shapes, all pulsing gently in and out, some lying on top of others, but each one still a quite separate individual dream. Now we is mixing them, the BFG announced. He went to the cupboard where he kept his bottles of frob scottle, and from it he took out a gigantic egg beater. It was one of those that had a handle which you turn, and down below there were a lot of overlapping blades that go whizzing around. He inserted the top end of his contraption into the big jar where the dreams were lying. Watch, he said. He started turning the handle very fast. Flashes of green and blue exploded inside the jar. The dreams were being whisked into a sea green froth. Poor things, Sophie cried. They is not feeling it, the BFG said as he turned the handle. Dreams is not like human beings or animals. They has no brains. They is made of zosimus. After a minute, the BFG stopped whisking. The whole bottle was now full to the brim with large bubbles. They were almost exactly like the bubbles we ourselves blow from soapy water, except the, these that um, had even brighter and more beautiful colors swimming on their surfaces. Keep watching, the BFG said. Quite slowly, the topmost bubble rose up through the neck of the jar and floated away. The second one followed, then a third and a fourth. Soon, the cave was filled with hundreds of beautifully colored bubbles, all drifting gently through the air. It was a, truly a wonderful sight. As Sophie watched them, they all started floating towards the cave entrance, which was still open. They're going out, Sophie whispered. Of course, the BFG said. Where to? Those is all t little tiny dream bits that I isn't using, the BFG said. They is going back to the misty country to join up with proper dreams. It's all a bit beyond me, Sophie said. Dreams is full of mystery and magic, the BFG said. Do not try to understand them. Look at the big bottle and you will see now the dream you was wanting for the queen. Sophie turned and stared into the great jar. On the bottom of it, something was thrashing around wildly, bouncing up and down and flinging itself against the walls of the jar. Good heavens, she cried. Is that it? That's it, the BFG said proudly. But it's, it's horrible, Sophie cried. It's jumping about. It wants to get out. That's because it's a truckle humper, the BFG said. It's a nightmare. Oh, but I don't want you to give the queen a nightmare, Sophie cried. If she is dreaming about giants guzzling up little boys and girls, then what is you expecting it to be except a nightmare, the BFG said. Oh, no. Sophie cried. Oh, yes, the BFG said. A dream where you is seeing little chiddlers being eaten is about the most frightsome troggle humping dream you can get. It's a kixie bog thumper. It's a wopsy grab switcher. It's all of them riddled into one. It's as bad as that dream I blew into the flesh lump eater this afternoon. It is worse. Sophie stared down at the fearful nightmare dream that was still thrashing away in the huge glass jar. It was much larger than the others. It was about the size and shape of, shall we say, a turkey's egg? It was jellyish. It had tinges of bright scarlet deep inside it. There was something terrible about the way it was throwing itself against the sides of the jar. I don't want 
to give the queen a nightmare, Sophie said. I is thinking, BFG said, that your queen will be happy to have a nightmare if having a nightmare is going to save a lot of human beings from being gobbled up by filthsome giants. Is I right or is I left? I suppose you're right, Sophie said. It's got to be done. She will soon be getting over it, the BFG said. Have you put all the other important things into it? Sophie asked. When I is blowing that dream into the queen's bedroom, the BFG said, she will be dreaming every single little thing-a-ling-a-ling -a -ling you is asking me to make her dream. About me sitting on the windowsill? That part is very strong. And about a big friendly giant? I is putting a nice long gobbit about him, the BFG said. As he spoke, he picked up one of his smaller jars and very quickly tipped the struggling, thrashing charcoal humper out of the large jar into the small one. Then he screwed the lid tightly onto the small jar. That's it, he announced. We is ready now. He fetched his suitcase and put the small jar into it. Why bother taking a great big suitcase when you've only got one jar, Sophie said. You could put that jar in your pocket. The BFG looked down at her and smiled. By goggles, he said, taking the jar out of the suitcase. Your head is not quite so full of glum switch after all. I can see you is not born last week. Thank you, kind sir, Sophie said, making a little curtsy from the tabletop. Is you ready to leave? The BFG asked. I'm ready. Sophie cried. Her heart was beginning to thump at the thought of what they were about to do. It really was a wild and crazy thing. Perhaps they would be thrown into a prison. The BFG was putting on his great black coat cloak. He tucked the jar into a pocket in his cloak. He picked up his long, trumpet-like dream blower. Then he turned and looked at Sophie, who was still on the tabletop. The dream bottle is in my pocket, he said. Is you going to sit there with it during the travel? Never, cried Sophie. I refuse to sit next to that beastly thing. Then where is you going to sit? The BFG asked her. Sophie looked him over for a few moments. Then she said, You would be kind enough to swivel your lovely, one of your lovely big ears. Remember, he's got really big ears so that it is lying flat like a dish. That would make a very cozy place for me to sit. By gumbo, that is a quackling good idea, the BFG said. Slowly, he swiveled, that was one of our vocab words, swiveled his huge right ear until it was like a great shell facing the heavens. He lifted Sophie up and placed her into it. The ear itself, which was about the size of a large tea tray, was full of the same channels and crinkles as a human ear. It was extremely comfortable. I hope I don't fall down your ear hole, Sophie said, edging away from the large hole just beside her. Be very careful not to do that, the BFG said. You would be giving me a crunking earache. The nice thing about being there was she could whisper directly into his ear. You is tickling me a bit, the BFG said. Please do not jiggle about. I'll try not to, Sophie said. Are we ready? Owie! cried the BFG. Don't do that! I didn't do anything, Sophie said. You is talking too loud! You is forgetting that I is hearing every little thing-a-ling-a-ling -a -ling 50 times louder than usual, and there you is shouting right inside my ear. Oh, gosh, Sophie murmured. I forgot that. Your voice is sounding like thunder and trumpets. I'm so sorry, Sophie whispered. Is that better? No, cried the BFG. It sounds as though you is shooting off a bunderbluss. Then how can I talk to you? Sophie whispered. Don't, cried the BFG. Please don't. Each word 
is like you is dropping buzz bombs in my ear hole. Sophie tried speaking right under her breath. Is this better? She said. She spoke so softly she couldn't even hear her own voice. That's better, the BFG said. Now I is hearing you very nicely. What is it you was trying to say to me just now? I was saying, are we ready? We is off, cried the BFG, heading for the cave entrance. We is off to meet her majesty, the queen. Outside the cave, he rolled the large round stone back into place and set off at a tremendous gallop. Okay, we're going to be done for today. You should see the next chapter is Journey journey to London right here. Um, we're going to read that one tomorrow. So stop at journey to London, put some kind of bookmark in there and we will finish. We'll keep reading tomorrow.